OptoInfo back with another leaky video. Today's video is a tutorial on suturing with Tino Nylon, super small. So we're talking micro surgery, okay? And the key message is have a script. You need to have a script before you sit down to suture Tino Nylon um, for the first time in, in the OR on a real human's eye. It's gonna be a spaghetti mess if you don't have a script. So come up with the script. The script means you need to know every single move that you're gonna make in order to tie a typical knot. Um, so uh, have a script. Let's go take a look at my script. If you like some of the aspects of it, then good. Incorporate into to your script. But the key thing is that you have your own script for how you like to do it. And it's not only committed to memory here, but it's committed to muscle memory here, okay? Have a script and then get your reps in. Let's go to the OR. So let's break that down. The first thing, if I don't have to grab the tissue, I don't push, push, pull. And when you pull, you wanna pull with the curvature of the needle. Okay, and we're pulling to our left inner elbow, because I'm right-handed in this case. We're pulling until we see the suture end, okay? We're looking for the suture end over here. And boom, you can see it now right there. So now I'm gonna grab at the far periphery here and do what I call the handoff, okay? So I'm never gonna drop, I still have control of the needle here. I'm not gonna drop this and lose control until I have already made the handoff. So I'm pulling it toward the left inner elbow, and you can see the sutures pointing off to the side in a straight line. I wanna grab that and almost close to a parallel angle. Um, I mean, what about, by that I mean the suture is coming almost straight out of the tip of the second instrument. That helps uh, form a loop when we go to the next step, okay? So I'm grabbing it, that, um, grabbing it like that, and now I'm letting go and it, you'll notice that the suture is still attached here. It's still attached despite the fact that I let go. Magnetized, right? Um, or maybe just adherent. So I want to, holding tightly with my second instrument, have a, I've let go of my needle driver and now I continue to pull towards my chest and then it will fall off. Um, and now I pull more and more and more until I get this tail uh, at the length that I want it to be. I like short tails, that'll save, your suit, save you some suture, okay? Now when I come back to the wound with both, both instruments, you can see the, loop, the first loop's already been made and it's super big, that's what you want. You wanna give yourself the slack, okay? The, the, one of the um, most common error, uh, errors I see um, with beginners is they'll they'll make they'll give themselves too little slack here. Give yourself a lot of slack. That makes this suture this these throws around the second instrument easier. Okay, three throws there, pulling it off the needle driver. I've got my my three braids there. If I wanted to lock it, I could do that. What I what you do there is maintain tension on both sides of the suture and compress the braid like that. Okay, I was doing it in slow motion. You actually want to do it a little bit faster. Tension on both in, on both sides, pull up and over like that. And that compresses that long braid into a little bitty dot, which increases the friction and is, uh, does a better job of holding tension on this wound uh, until I can throw the next locking braid here, okay? Now for this next braid that I just did around the needle driver, let me do it again. I come around it, pick up the tail, and point right at the knot. See how my second instrument is pointed right, I'm sorry, my needle driver's right here. It's pointed right at the knot there. So now, I mean, I'm pulling in, in 90 degrees away. Um, it's not 180 degrees, it's 90 degrees away. And the, the loop slips right over the, the needle driver and then cinches down on the knot, okay? That's pretty. And then you can do the same thing with the last throw. Do the same thing, okay? That makes it look pretty, okay. So now we've got our 311. I've maintained con uh, control of the suture here. I haven't let go. I've got my three my three braids, three locking braids, but I don't want, don't just let go yet, it's not over. We're gonna throw more, we have to cut this and we're gonna throw more sutures, okay? So before you let go, sneak your, your needle driver into the loop again, and then let go of the suture and sort of direct it into the mouth of the second instrument. So now I'm, I'm not holding too tight here. The, the tips of the second instrument will be touching, but the 
you know, the inner jaws or the mouth or whatever you want to call it will be open. And I, and I can just feed this suture, slip the, uh, sec the needle driver in here and feed this suture through the second instrument until the needle is dragged back up onto the field. Then I loosen up a little bit and then re-grasp the suture with the jaws and I can reload the needle. So in that way, you never lose control, okay? And then we'll, what we do is take the tip, the part that's spatulated, and use that as a blade to, to cut the suture. Okay, that's so you don't have to hand scissors back and forth. Drape it over and then just boop, run it off the end of the needle and it'll cut it. And then you're ready to make your second throw. Push, push, pull, pull until I have the end of the suture in sight. That's good. Now I'm going to grab in the far periphery here. Really, this would be zoomed out a little bit more, but I want the visual. I want you to have a, be able to see good here. I do the handoff. Sorry, I do the handoff, and then I, I let go with my right hand, and it's still attached. But I'm going to pull away from my left hand. That flings it off off the field, who cares? Don't worry about where it goes right now. Later on, you'll worry about dropping on the speculum because it can be stuck, but don't worry about that right now. Just pop it off, pull until you get a nice short tail there. Come back to the wound. You've got your first big loop already. One, two, three. Practice doing three because it's more difficult, although you don't need it here, simply because your the wound is already is well opposed. If the suture is laying down uh, on the surface too much and you want it to float a little bit more, just put a little bit of water on it, okay? That's, uh, the eye is typically a little bit more moist than this. I've got my, um, I've got my, let me choke up on this so you can see it. Okay, if I wanna lock this braid, rather I should say compress this braid, I'll put tension on both sides, and then go up and over real quick, up and over. I'm just showing you multiple times. That locks it in place. Come back to the, do your second throw. Point at the knot. Boop. Same thing, last throw. Don't let go. Needle driver in the loop. Beat it into the mouth. Drag the suture onto the field. Relax, re-grasp. And reload. Now I can cut. Now if you're really fancy, if you're really slick, sometimes the needle, the, the sutures will be down like that. And it'll be almost like an intersection where you can grab two, grab them both at the same time. So you have them both grasped. And then you can cut both of them with one, with one swipe. So the point is have a script. Have a script, be able to go through it in your mind's eye without any props, without actually having the instruments and the needle, um, and just then get reps in. Do your script over and over again. And then what you can learn as you're doing your reps, you'll run into pitfalls, figure out the pitfalls. I'll make some videos on, on some common pitfalls. And uh, yeah, that's it. Have fun. Peace.